Hi and welcome, my name is Epigenic and I'm here to tell you about my personal UI, add-ons and weak auras. We're again on my Shadow Priest Divinius on the ground, um, but take note that this information can apply to every class even though it does slightly focus on Shadow Priest. I'll be using the footage in the background to illustrate various points throughout this video. Now before we'll go and start, there are a few add-ons that you need to have in order to get the same type of UI that I'm using. Primarily I'm using LVY for the majority of the changes that you can see in comparison with the default UI. Further add-ons that I'm using include Deadly Boss Mods, Weak Auras, Exorcist Ray Tools, SCADA, GTFO and Enemy Grid. We'll talk about each add-on in turn and how they improve my UI. So let's start talking about the general ID you should be focusing on when altering your UI. The focus point and question you should always ask yourself when messing around with your user interface should be as followed. How can I minimize the amount of space my UI uses on screen while improving the amount of information that I can process at the same time? Therefore, I've dissected my UI into three parts, on-screen information, character information, and secondary information. To clarify this point, let's take a look at my UI, and we'll start with the most important information and work outwards towards, towards less important information. So, on-screen information is basically everything that happens in a raid encounter. You want a broad overview of a raid boss encounter so that you can see everything that's going on and will allow you to make decisions according to the information displayed. Therefore, you want to have a UI that's both minimalistic so you can see as much of the fight as possible. Therefore, I personally prefer having a central hub of your information while keeping the rest of the screen as clear as possible. So I have all my character and rotation information in the center of the screen and I have my secondary and non-vital information as far from the center of the screen as possible. Again, allowing me to see the most of the encounter as I can, while obscuring as little of the encounter as possible. Now, onto our character information. As you can see to the left and right of the center of the screen, you can see my own character's HP and status, and of the opposite of that, the boss's HP and status. Slightly below the boss HP is my enemy grid add-on. This will allow me to quickly target any add-on or add that are visible uh, that are in vision while simultaneously keeping a look on the boss's hp and energy below my character bar on the other hand i have the deadly boss mods counter they start at the very left of the screen for abilities that will be used further than 30 seconds ahead whenever a boss uses a, or is about to use an ability in the next 30 seconds however the bar will move below my character allowing me to get the necessary information of the boss fight in a glance without a second of looking or it will allow me to prepare in advance as to how I want to handle certain situations and move accordingly. Below my actual in-game character I have four separate bars. The top bar is my casting bar and it is closest to my character. The second bar shows the spells that are most vital to my rotation and have a cooldown that is important to track. As a Shadow Priest, tracking Mind Blast, Void Bolt and Shadow of Death are my primary concerns during raids. Below that is my Insanity bar. The Insanity bar that I'm using is based on Twin Top's Insanity bar for weak auras. I'll be posting a link in the description below for any of you that wish to download this weak aura. It, immensely, it is immensely helpful for any Shadow Priest and I highly recommend you give it a shot. It is easily accessible, it is moderately easy to change the values that you want to see and I just again highly suggest you take a look and try it out. Now both the top spell bar and insanity bar are the most important things to track during a raid encounter. So I have these close to the center of the screen and in such a play that in such a place that obtaining the information on these bars doesn't take more than a second at maximum. This allows me to focus more on boss mechanics. Below the insanity bar I'm tracking bigger cooldowns that usually have more than a 20 second timer. Even though they are extremely important, they are slightly below the main two bars because they are more situational. Now between my main set of ability bars, there's a space available for everything that has to do with Exorcist's raid tools. For those of you who don't know, Exorcist implements specific rosters or dynamic maps to each raid encounter to help you accurately detect where a boss will target a specific ability, or it can create interactive raid frames that allow for quick handling of certain boss mechanics. A good example of this is the Shadow Lord Iskal Phantasmal Wind ability, or the frame that uh, appears when fighting argument and shows the source of chaos beams. The placement of these interactive frames is again close enough to the main ability bars that prevents me from having to look anywhere else on the screen to get the right information, while simultaneously allowing you to regain focus on the actual screen and the boss's abilities as quickly as you possibly can. 
and at the very bottom of the screen you'll find the rest of my keen binded spells that neither have a cooldown or are important enough to keep a track of. A good example of this are my two damage over time abilities, namely Shadow Whip Pain and Vampiric Touch. Both of these are used a lot throughout the fight, however, since I know they're keen binding and they don't have a cooldown, I don't need to have them anywhere except at the very bottom of my UI, which is the least important part of your UI. And furthermore, Enemy Grid also keeps track of my dots, so I can really easily refresh them either manually or via Vault Bullet. Now, third and last is your secondary information. These include SCADA, non-interactive base rate frame, minimaps, chat, etc. Except when playing a tank or a healer, you don't interact that much at all with the rate frame. Although keeping a look at your rate frame is important for when rate wide damage is high and you can get off a helpful vampiric embrace, it is not really anything to consistently check. As I've said before, most boss specific abilities that actually need an interactive rate frame is done by Exorcist Raid Tools and is found below your primary spell bars. I have Skanda at the bottom right as it's just a vanity thing and I really just like to see how my DPS is doing. Again, it's not something that you can track at all during a fight. Now, these rules apply to basically any class. However, I do want to have a quick little talk about what you should and shouldn't be tracking. Although I'll be using my Shadow Priest as an example, this occurs for every class and is something you might be doing that you aren't aware of. So I've had multiple people asking me what I track via weak auras or whatever I do to get the DPS that I have. And it's quite easily not what you can track, it's what you can ignore that improves your DPS. For example, you can massively increase your DPS if you know all your key bindings by heart, if you know the general cooldowns of your spells without ever looking at your bars, but perhaps most importantly, and which I would advise anyway, is you should know your raid encounter. This doesn't mean that you should uh, learn all the abilities or it doesn't uh, primarily include this, it is also dependent on your raid composition and how long your guild or group takes on every fight. Even though right now everyone is blazing through Hellfire Citadel for example on farm mode, it is still possible to vastly improve your DPS by following a basic set of ideas. So if you know how long an encounter is going to be, again I'm taking the Shadow Priest as an example, you can use your uh, Surrender to Madness at the most optimum time as you possibly can. For example, using it too early while farming will just make it so you die before the uh, fight is ended. However, using it too late, too late is just a waste of potential DPS. So knowing when to pop your Surrender to Madness all depends on how fast your guild or group can clear a boss, and knowing specifically when a ranged encounter only has about 2 minutes and 20 seconds left, since this is the maximum time I can personally spend in Surrender to Madnesses. So this means that for early bosses you can use Surrender to Madness at the start of a fight, however, Manoroth and Argument are a whole different story. Secondly is knowing when to use your cooldowns and when not to. It sucks using your big cooldowns just as a boss is switching between phases. You can think about the Iron Reaver pushing to his bombardment mode or Arkhamon switching to the nether, nether Realm. So popping your cooldowns at the wrong moment will severely hamper your DPS, especially with burst heavy classes knowing when to use what cooldowns will skyrocket your DPS. And last but not least, and a personal pet peeve of mine, is you should cut down your weak auras and keep tracking to the things that actually matter. I know a lot of Shadow Priests, and I was one of them myself, that love tracking their spacious spirits, for example. However, this is not something you have control over. Even less so, it's not information that is ever going to alter your gameplay. So why bother tracking it? It's just extra unnecessary information that will evidently cover your screen, hamper your ability to focus, and will, you know, as I said, it will hamper your ability to focus on the boss mechanics. Anyway, those were my ideas and opinions on what a good UI should have to improve your overall performance. Hopefully this was in any way helpful to all of you. If you did enjoy my little rant, be sure to check out my other videos. I'll be uploading a ton of videos when Legion Raiding actually comes out. Until then, don't be afraid to leave a like or subscribe to the channel, and if you don't, don't hesitate to mash that dislike button. This was Epigenic Gaming, thank you for your time and attention, and have a good one. See ya.